JFK Jr. JFK Jr. There's some weird, weird stuff surrounding this guy. And I'm entertained by it. I'm just going to say that. I'm just, I'm entertained by that. What's up, Mike? What's happening, man? It's good to see you. Good to hear you. Good to see the back of your head, as always. You get hey, excited man. for, uh, for next you. Thanksgiving and next week's trip. You're, uh, you're going on a Dude. Cali trip with us. I've never been to the West Coast, so I'm pretty excited. And I also saw that um, my layover is in Texas. Never been to Texas. And then on the way back, we're in Las Vegas. I'm like, that's friggin' awesome. We're going to do Dig okay. It. Now, I'm already, listen, I'm going to apologize for one thing, all right? I got you in killer seats except for the flight from Houston to California. It was only, only middle seats left. So no worries, I'm man. already apologize, but we'll, we'll take care of you once you land. And for those of you who don't know, please join us. Um, this California run we're super stoked about, and we're going to visit our friend Tony Roman at his restaurant down there in Huntington Beach, and we're going to do the podcast from there. We're going to tape a podcast from there. Uh, my friend Brian Cowan is going to come by. Uh, we, ha- we, ha- we may have another guest that's been on our show before stopping by in the California. We're going to tape that in Huntington Beach. Um, a second boom, boom. and we're gonna be at oh god of course i screwed this up already i'm sorry for the edit no worries what the hell is what's his name the restaurant botilicos uh, Bat- or, or, okay so i'm gonna start it basilicos or or, or... basilicos is it right you can put the thing right? up uh it doesn't matter so anyway we're gonna be taping uh, a podcast at basilicos basilicos in huntington beach california this uh monday i'm not sure when you're listening to this podcast and we're doing a whole california run go to jimbrew.com st louis uh obispo we're going to we're going monterey never been to monterey playing the irvine uh, irvine california gonna play that improv there uh, then we're heading to near Las Vegas and Bakersfield. And everyone said, you don't want to play Bakersfield. I had a lot of people because it's the middle of nowhere. And I said, that's why I want to play. So I hope to see a great turnout in Bakersfield, California, and all the West Coast run. JimBrewer.com. Going to see a lot of Patreon members. I want to say hello to Heather and, of course, Thomas and everyone that I've seen along the road on this past trip. I brought my father-in-law. We had a great time. Um, here's some pictures from it. Let me see some of the pictures from our road trip. Um, this was with the Herbinator. Oh, my God. He is. He wears his veteran's hat. And he got on this ship in Mobile, Alabama, and he was the happiest cat in the world. He was two, two Navy guys talking. Walking along the ship, he was like a child going through this thing. It was so fun to watch. It really was so fun to watch. So look at him. Look at him. And you know what? This guy just had his hip replaced, his second hip replaced. And he hasn't had be- – he's explained the boiler. He loves boilers. Loves going, hey, he's still working in the boiler room. I was in the boiler room. And I want to try to – me and Joe Sib – had such a great time with him. We need to bring him on the podcast. We need to bring him on the road. Um, this is a coffee shop. We stopped in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's all on my Instagram page and stuff like that. And it was just, it, we had such, it was so nice bringing him along. And I don't know if we're able to dial into Joe Sib real quick. Let me see if I can get him. Let me see if I can get him. Let me see if I can get him real quick. 
there is a part which I got to bring. I go, we got to bring this as part of the show, where Herb tries to read jokes. He Hi. laughs. Joe, what are you doing, bro? Dude, you? first, I'm doing good. I'm talking about our last road trip in California, bringing in Herb, and the Herbinator. Oh. It was. I was like, we got to bring him on the road. We got to bring him on the road. Herbie rules. That guy stokes me so hard. Just, I know. Uh, he just the the look that he. Well, the first of all, for an eighty-something-year-old dude, he was cruising on the road. He's 80. up first. Yeah. He's in the van yeah. first. He was never late yep. for a van call. No. Nope. You know. <laughs> That's right. All and dude, he's like a kid in the back seat. All I hear him watching is TikTok videos. I'm like, what are you watching yeah. back there? <laughs> he's on his phone. Busting jokes. No, no. What the best was? This was the, I think the first night um, we're in Pensacola and we go to this little Italian restaurant. And I seen this. I actually called Mike and Margot a week ago. I'm like, you got it. We got to get this segment on the podcast. We have to get the segment. And then you came up with a great name. You said, "What makes Herbie laugh?" Oh. He he yeah. he tells. He reads these jokes he gets. And he laughs. <laughs> he can't breathe. He, his mouth opens. He goes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I said, we're going well, to make this guy a star overnight. He's not going to be able to walk anywhere. Um, the, thing that, the thing that he would yeah. do with the jokes, the thing he would do with the jokes, Jim, was, so I guess it's like him and his buddies are all on some email chain, yes. and they yeah. send each other jokes. And yeah. he would start to read one. I go, Herbie, read another one. He goes, okay, okay. And he goes, he would read it to himself before he would read it to me, but he couldn't stop laughing, so he would hand me his phone to read it because it would already make him laugh so hard. Right. You guys don't understand. He would go like this. Yeah. You don't know if he's having a heart attack because he's 80 or something. Ah. Ah. I'm not even exaggerating. And if we, I'm telling oh. you, we can capture this and we bring in the podcast. You guys are going to laugh. You're going to laugh so, you're going to have to pull over in your car to listen to it if you're listening or watching. But I want to say congrats. I know you had a big weekend. I don't have a lot of time. Oh. Joe had to leave um, in the middle of it and he did something with Tony Hawk and all these guys. And you were, oh, you were you were a little nervous about it, but you're in your element, and it was uh, a great time for you. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you know what? I'll send the, I'll get the photo. I got to get the photo to Mike because I, I, I might, I think I sent it to you. Yeah, just amazing for everyone. Yeah, all I got to say is this: the Bones Brigade were the premier skateboard team in Pal Peralta, the company in the '80s, and um, you know, being a skater growing up in in California. Um, you know, those, those were my guys. They were my Mets. They were my Metallica. You know, they, they were it for me. And to, to get asked by, um, you know, Stacey Peralta, who founded the team, and Mike McGill, and Stevie, and Tony, and Tommy Guerrero, and Rodney Mullen, and, and Lance Mountain, and to be there with these seven guys, and for them to say, hey, we want you to do, you know, comedy, and then you bring us on stage. It was, dude, it was, it, it was, it was so amazing. And, you know, it was, it was, it was emotional, man. Like, I feel like I left the wedding. Like this morning I woke up and I was like, did that really happen? It was just so yeah. amazing. Well, I, I don't, I want to, I want to put a lot of time into it. I don't have time now, but I just want to say, have a great Thanksgiving. I'm super Absolutely, excited. You bro. got to do this event and then we'll do a full recap when we get back. Sounds good. And For I'll sure. see you in California. I'll see you in California next week. Dude. Me and Mike. Hey, Dieter, I got to ask you, are you going to eat yeah. the country ball wheels to survive turkey? Are you going to eat that turkey? Oh, God, I had some last night. Oh, that turkey? The uh, turkey that you got? Yes. Isn't that yes. in your freezer? Yes, it is in the freezer. So, yeah, no, we're going to yeah. eat it, and I'll let you know how it went. <laughs> All right, brother. See you in a week. Later, you guys. Have a good one. Happy Thanksgiving, Later. everyone. Later, man. All right, Joe. All right, so today we're going – we're going, we're going far out. And this is what I'm going to say. Stay on the ride. It's not, it's not all facts. It's not, it's, it's not whether you believe this and you want to think it's conspiracy or whatever. It's, it's, it's entertaining to say the least. But a lot of people will go, you know, at this time and day, 
you 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 have to admit by now that something bizarre is going on. Um, the good news is we just figured out how to um, cle- uh, take care of homelessness, and apparently that's bringing over a Chinese leader because that that was we cleared the streets of San Francisco overnight. So that that was a good thing. Um, and we had American soldiers holding uh, Chinese flags. So that was good. That was fun. That was fun to watch. So now, with that said, a lot of you are watching things. Now, the January 6th tapes are all out there to see. And for what most of us already knew, and we're, you know, we were considered conspiracy, now it's all coming to fruition. Now you see, clearly, they hit a lot. If you haven't seen the January 6th, you need to check out the January 6th tapes. It has police, it, ha- it has, now again, this is just entertainment, okay? But the videos are, are pretty self-explanatory. There's a video where a guy dressed up in full-blown MAGA goes up and he's, he comes through with the flag and then he flashes his badge. And they just kind of wave them in. You see videos of police officers showing people where to go. And again, we all know this. We already knew this. But there's so many people that just only watch the news and they only thrive on their emotions that are fed hating, hating Trump or hating whatever, whatever you hate. And they fed your emotions. But it's all coming through, which brings me to this. Are we in the middle of a psychological war that we have no clue what's really going on? And is it so deep that certain people that they say died aren't dead? And... We're going to present that to you today. And again, it does, it's just, even if you're like, oh, come on, this is already, this is, this is already crazy. Everything's crazy. What isn't crazy at this point? Seriously, what isn't crazy? So why not be entertained? And this is why I'm going to present to you from every angle, and I want you to just listen. Just give it a, give it some patience, okay? Give it a little patience. I'm not saying he's alive. I'm just saying it's a little bizarre when we're going to show you what we're going to show you today. JFK Jr. JFK Jr. There's some weird, weird stuff surrounding this guy. And I'm entertained by it. I'm just going to say that. I'm just, I'm entertained by that. Let's bring on Jimmy Shaka. What's going on? Now, the first time Shaka... Yeah, that I was that I, I I thought this was so outrageous. But there's certain things about JFK Jr. And one of the things that blows my mind, he said, and he put in a quote, and I don't know if we have that. We'll have to look on the screen. So we, we got all these different things for you to all look at. It's pretty deep and it's pretty embedded. And it even links to uh trump yep no matter how you feel about trump doesn't matter those two had a link kennedy's and trump and we're going to show that to you today and so uh and that's a fact it's not a it's not a uh conspiracy what that's these are facts they were good friends 
They were good friends. They were friends. People saw him JFK in New York Jr. all the time, hanging out, doing their thing, ball games, yada yada. And I'm not, I'm not gonna give you hope or nothing, but I was. I, I'm just saying, let's pretend this is just a show, and we're gonna give you a mystery show. <laughs> and if you if you think you know, some people, oh Trump, the people that hate Trump, uh, Trump, this, blah, blah blah. And this is not politics. It's just pretend I'm talking about a guy named Fred. You got to remember, uh, if you think Donnie Brasco, people that try to infiltrate organized crime, sometimes they're in it, drug lords, uh, political, whatever that crime is, organized crime. You watch the Tom Cruise movie where he was delivering the drugs and the CIA hired him and the FBI hired him, but yet they were playing both sides. You know, we, we, we've been grown, breaded, and brainwashed to think all our government branches are for us. They're not. They're not. It's, it's, it's all a mirage. And um, so with that said, is it possible that to think about an organized crime, you gotta get, you gotta know their moves. You gotta be embedded with their moves. Some people are in the in the, in the uh, organized crime for twenty years, and you gotta witness horrible things. You gotta participate in order for them to trust you. You saw the movie uh, with Jack Nicholson and The Departed, when those guys going undercover. They had to witness bad things. They had to set up bad news. You don't, what blows my mind is you'll buy that in a movie, even when it's a true story, but you don't know if it's real right here, right now. Right. Giuliani partially took down the mobsters. You don't think Trump was around for that? Who knows? <clears throat> well, so with that said, JFK Jr., we're going to show you some bizarre things. And one of the most profound things that I love that he wrote was this quote. And I don't know where it was. He was starting to become a lawyer. But he wrote, um, and Jimbo, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Something like it said, I will expose the killers of my father or something like that. But here's the powerful moment. Here's the powerful thing I want you guys to hear. Even if it takes taking down my own government. Right. And people, I'm telling you, for the first time in my life, I'm watching the January 6th tapes, which they can't hide anymore. You, they can't scream. This was the next night. I'm watching now Italy. If you're not watching, if you're watching the news, you're not getting any of this. You're, Italy has come forward. People in Italy, the, the highest said, yeah, Matt, we stole your election. Yeah, the election was stolen. We didn't steal it, but yes, it's all going on right now, and you guys have no, the general public has no clue what's going on. Where did you hear? Mirages. Where'd you hear that? That's oh, come on. Where'd you hear that? And it doesn't matter where we heard it. It's happening. That's right. So, <clears throat> is it possible? Is it possible? Now, here's one of the weird things that threw me off. So, do, Jimbo, do you know what co the quote I'm talking about? Yeah, I what believe JFK that. What Jr. I, said. Yeah. I believe that was, um, I believe that was in his magazine, which was George. George. Right. George. Named after his father's yes. killer, by the way. But uh, that's, a, that's a story for another day. No, it's not. He's basically saying George Bush. Right. George Bush, who, whether you want to face it or not, faced our nation and said it is time for a new world, world order. order. He'd even try to hide it. Yeah. Same thing with Bush Sr. Once he uh, declared what he said, you're either with us or with them. Now, all of us, America, we thought he was talking about good American human beings. Or was he talking about the takeover of humanity 
by a couple of the most evil, disgusting, demonic leaders in the world that do the most disturbing, disgusting, pure evil things that most of you cannot handle if the truth is revealed. And that's the God's honest truth. Right. A lot of you still cannot handle it, but you're going to have to eventually. You're not going to have a choice. So with that said, JFK Jr., there's some bizarre little things. Now, I, I don't even know where to start. Where do we start on this one? Well, there there was um, – <clears throat> there, okay, there, there was a documentary – called dark legacy two you could find it on um you could find it on rumble all right look for dark legacy i i you know like roman numeral two and um this guy talks all about how there was a lot of strange stuff that happened that day that kennedy died first of all First of all, the guy the, the guy was known to be very responsible. He was not this like he was not this he wasn't George Bush Jr. doing blow and fucking getting drunk in bars and banging doors, right? He he, he was he was a very uh a responsible, respectful, very respectful guy. Godly and also godly. Right, right. Um big god guy. Big yeah, Jesus guy, yeah. big bad guy. Yeah, he was he was a good guy, um, and and there was also so so his plane and the way his plane went down. It's like we look we we grew up on Long Island, so we know we know how big of an area they're talking about that they had a search. It's not much, right? No, it, it's not. It, it no. wasn't much, and they and they're like well we didn't start the search till like 11 hours later and we we searched all the way out in the ocean oh and um <laughs> the coast guard or the government took over like right away they stepped in it was supposed to be like the um i don't know who normally does it the the airline or whoever it was like normally does these things right um yeah. um all of a sudden, the government jumped in and said, oh, "No, we got this. Step away." And and a lot of the initial reports, like, um, okay, there was one report that said that said, uh, um, "Yeah, he contacted the tower at whatever it was nine nine thirty eight p.m. or so, or whatever it was, uh, whatever time he was well, supposed to land." Go ahead. Right. Right. And well, then, this is what I was going to say. Yeah, go ahead. No, but, and then, but, and then, uh, and then the next thing you know, all of a sudden, that news report was never heard from again. And the next reporter gets on and says, "Well, he never contacted the tower. He, I thought he contacted the tower. Nope, he never contacted the tower. Right? The government guys stepped in and said all this stuff. So that was the first interesting thing. But go on. But here's here's what I'm going to ask you to play along with. Just play along with. This is a the most popular, maybe maybe the most. I mean, you could say George Washington, perhaps one of the all time most popular leaders in the world. Son, who in front of the world said, JFK said, we have secret societies trying to run this land we live in and beyond yep this is a fact it's not a it's not a conspiracy this is a fact what jfk said he called out secret societies yep. new world order illuminate whatever you want to call it whatever you want to call it blah, blah, blah. this is his son now, I want you to think, if there were no newspapers, let's take common sense. If my father was supposedly assassinated, which is another bizarre thing, is that video that we all watch didn't come. It, we all think that was live on TV. That was not live on TV, JFK's assassination. 
That came out months later. Oh, ye years I later, that. I think. I think. I don't know that for a fact. No, no, what? you did. You're you're one hundred percent right. The Subrut the Subruder film uh, uh, came out. I, I think it might have even been year a year or, or more so, later. But do you understand, people? That is the mirage. You watch it and you go, that happened that day. We watched what happened that day. No, they had plenty of time to create a video. Mm -hmm. Edit. Now, you can call that far-fetched all you want, but let's go along with this little entertainment story. If that was my father and I knew he was assassinated, or they were gonna assassinate him. You don't think that I would spend my entire lifetime? Would you? If you knew someone, forget he's a president, that's your father. Would you spend your life out to take down anyone and everyone that's involved with trying to murder your father? in front of the entire world where they also take the narrative and they tell you the only speech they ever give for JFK is like, you know, ask not what you can do, ask what you can do for what a, what a great little thing to put out there when they hide, which yeah. is now all out there, that entire, probably one of the most powerful speeches that I've ever heard in my lifetime. And I was blessed that Rogan put that out there. I, when I was on one Rogan show, I put it out there and we listened to it. He's powerhouse. So with that said, you need to think about that. That's your dad. And he just, you know, I would spend my life trying to figure out who are these people. Now, you don't think one of the most powerful human beings in the world, let alone the United States, you don't think they're going to be watching his kids like a hawk? Right. Now, let's take the Dave his plane. You think JFK, let, let's go, you think JFK Jr. just was like, hey, man, I'm going to take my plane, and nobody checked that plane? You know how thoroughly you have to check your plane before it takes off. You don't just show up to a car. You, it, this isn't a car or a scooter right. where you're just like, hey man, it's, uh, I, I wanna go to Martha's Vineyard. I, I'm, gonna go, I, I'm just gonna, hey guys, I need someone in the tower and we're gonna be flying. You don't think people are checking that thing like a hawk going through every detail? Now the rumor, the rumor, the quote conspiracy, which is really the word that the um, our government made up. Conspiracy is a theory, a thought. Now, so with that said, hold on. Now, 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 do you know when they started using conspiracy? Please do tell us. When uh, JFK was assassinated, JFK Sr. What a coincidence. They needed. What a coincidence. Yeah, they needed some word to just douse the conversation. We can't even let the conversation get started. You're conspiracy theorist, yada, yada, yada. That's, right. that's where, that's where right. intentionally popularized it. Go ahead. So there you go. A word that was created to make you stop looking and just believe the narrative. Now, perhaps... And we're going to show you after this little theory. I'm not saying this theory is a fact. I'm just saying it's just it's fun to think about. Someone said, hey, man, they rigged this plane, and they're going to try to kill you. Now, the theory goes, once they knew that, they set up a plan, and they knew the plan already. And the plan was they, they recorded JFK's Junior's voice saying, hey, I'm coming into Martha's Vineyard, blah, blah, blah. And he wasn't even on the plane. They had Navy SEALs, Patriot Navy SEALs in the water, flying the plane, jumped out, SEALs are waiting for him, plane goes down. Oh, he's dead. But is he dead? What, Jimbo? 
There was a, uh, uh, they, when they found the wreckage, one of Show the, the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. We have a, sorry, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have cut you no, off. No, it's okay. When they, you could, you could, get, when they, when they found the wreckage, one of the plane seats was missing, which I thought was very interesting. Like it was very interesting. Yeah. Like was, was, would that have given away that there was that other co-pilot that they said wasn't on board? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. But anyway, one of the seats were missing. Go ahead. Now, now here's what you got to understand too. All right, let's see this board that Mike has of these videos and stuff. Um, okay, let's start with, first of all, the top left one, a letter to Joe Biden from JFK Jr. I want everyone to listen closely. This is That's a great. letter. It's not, it's not a conspiracy. This is a fact. Can we punch into this letter? This is a letter from JFK Jr. to Joe Biden, not the Joe Biden of today. And I can't read, but he basically says, are you able to read that, Mike? Or Jim, are you able to read that? I can't read it. Let's see. We need to, we need to go full screen. Uh, but at the end of the day, for those of you just listening, Okay. He clearly says, Joe Biden. I can read it. You are a you are a traitor to this country. This is no, J. Well, this, F okay, uh, Mike. This the page the page you have here. Um, that's that doesn't have the letter. I think the next no, one is the letter. The this next one says. Does personally delivered by special agent blah 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 to it's almost like the cover of the facts okay okay well i saw the actual thing where he says let's try this one same thing. oh dear yeah, senator same biden thing. oh there there it was back up put that back yeah he says, Dear Senator Biden, you are a traitor, dot, dot, dot. And, and bearing the signature, John F. Kennedy. Oh, it, anyway, the accompany hand, it says the accompany handwritten, hand printed letter dated, blah, 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 uh, 1994, beginning, Dear Senator Biden, you are a traitor, bearing the signature, John F. Kennedy Jr. Right. Now, why would JFK Jr., who's not even in government, write a letter to Joe Biden when he's a senator in 1994 saying you are a traitor? Right. As it go, you can all look this up and figure out why did he call him a traitor. So now this brings us to. JFK Jr. comes out with a magazine called yeah. George Magazine. Yeah. Now, even before we get into that, JFK Jr. was asked, because all the girls loved him. He was he he would do he was a good looking guy, great personality. Would you ever run for president? You know, and the crowd goes crazy. And he says. I think my buddy Donnie Trump, if yes. he ever left his riches, would be a great president of 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 our of our country, of the yep. Republic of the United States. Yep. Um, why would JFK Jr., whose father was taken out by who knows, uh, although the files are out there, um, calls his magazine George. <laughs> is that a taunt? Is that a taunt to George Bush? Is that, a, is that a taunt to the New World Order leaders? We don't know. Is that, we don't know. But also the day he died, yeah. he was going to run for senator. And do you know who he was running against? Hillary Clinton.
That's right. Who has who breaks a record for best friends that have killed themselves. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I've never met – does anyone know a human <laughs> being that has over 10, 15 people that have killed themselves in their circle? It's pretty mind-blowing. You, you, now, what? You know, we never um, – JFK Jr. never officially announced, I am running for Senate, but he put the Correct. word out there. Right. He Correct. put he was he was talking to friends. One of his friends and he might have lured in the bad right. guys. Interesting. So you gotta kill him. Interesting. Um he and one of maybe one he of, set the trap. Maybe. With that said, uh put that board up. I want you guys to see some actual videos. Now, first of all, I've already told you on this podcast. Um where okay, see the one with Jim now. RFK Jr., who's been on the show, he's running for president, that clearly, why would Robert Kennedy Jr. do this? This is not a scratch of his nose. You know, this probably was, it Watch was this. Extraordinary on so Somebody's... The deep hey, pause it, Mike. Pause it, Mike. Pause it, Mike. I want to explain it first. I want to explain it first. This video, someone says, they, they type right there, touch yeah. your knows if JFK Jr. is alive. It's in capital letters. This is plain as day. I saw this right in the middle of COVID. And watch what Robert Kennedy Jr. does. He clearly reads it. He reads it. And then he touches his nose. Watch this. It's the deep memo. And this this memo is reading it documents that are not, not in the public. He's reading it. And the Beach memo is, is He's one reading of those the comments. It's a discovery document. Boom! <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? It's right there. You can see you it on the screen. Tell, you can't tell me you didn't just see that. Are you serious? That's as yeah. plain as day. Yep. He did it right then and there. You cannot deny what you just saw. Now he's either playing games. But why would he play that game? Right. Why would you play that game? What blows me out more and more is, hey, Brian. Uh, no, dude, I'm doing a podcast. Oh, there you go. So he, he literally, how, how would you, why? Why? No. You can't deny what I just showed you. And you can try all you want to go, well, it was just cool. It was just playing around. Why would you do that if you're running for president? It makes zero sense. Now I'm going to show you some other heavy stuff. And I'll just say this, and I, I don't see it up there, but there is a... I, I, it, there's a guy that gives the speech. Yes, he's giving a lecture. And he talks about Q. And you could be like, oh, you know, Q is... You can say that all you want. It's fine. And he also brings up JFK Jr., which is pretty mind blowing. Like who? And he mentions Trump's photographer, who was with Don. J j just play this and listen to this. This is mind boggling. Yep. That's right. Q is the most trusted. There's only 200 naval pilots at any given moment on the face of this planet that are Q capable. They are the most trusted. They can carry a nuclear weapon. No one else can. I heard that going off in my ear. Yeah, that's what happens when you talk about Q. <laughs> and Q wasn't known yet. Right. Q is six military intelligence agencies led by the President of the United States of America. And a very, very special man that is helping, who currently serves as the Vice President of the United States of America. What? And it was kind of kind of fun to be on that helicopter that dropped him off on Mount Rushmore so he could stand on George Washington's head. What? Yeah. I saw the picture. You're welcome. 
What's that? Who's the vice president? John F. Kennedy Jr. What? Why would? Why would this guy say this? This is he's being dead serious. The guy's name I just found I, out I got the privilege of being the guy's name is uh it's David Strait and the lecture series is called Out of Babylon Conference, uh eight parts, and it's about uh restoring the republic. Restoring Correct. the republic. Very interesting. Restoring the republic, which is what this nation is. It's been taken over, but what is that? You can't deny what you're listening to. And you may say, oh, blah, blah. Well, this guy's in a classroom. If I'm in a classroom and someone's telling me JFK Jr., if, if I'm, gonna, I'm like, I'm getting up and I'm walking out. Listen to what he says. Continue. And then we're going to show and you. On Don Jr.'s helicopter with Gene Ho. Gene Ho is uh, President Trump's. Photographer. Photographer. Mm -hmm. I met him. And uh, and John Jr. on July the second of last year, and we just flew him up on top of Mount Rushmore, dropped him off, and let him walk out there. And Gene took a picture. It's pretty cool. Now, do you have? And do we have that picture? picture? Yeah, it's coming. I love how he said, "Yeah, it's coming." It's coming. Do we have that Do picture? Have that? Oh, I got so it. If, if, I got okay, it. Show this picture right there. Look at that picture. Now, yes, you could say, well, you know, they Photoshop. Why would this man talk about it? Why would this guy say Don Jr. helicopter dropped off John F. Kennedy Jr. on top of to take the picture. What, what, why? Hold on. Here's another. Here's a, here's another one. Um. Uh. Hold on a second. I'm forwarding to you again, Mike. Uh, God, I want to be alive. Was it? Pull it. Pull up this one right now. Just because I think this was the picture from that magazine, right? Yes. Look at John F. Kennedy Jr. Why is he sitting at Mount Rushmore? What you? Look at. I mean. Come on, come on! You can't, you can't tell me. At least the stoners are like, "Whoa, dude!" Even if you don't believe any, you would, even let's say you don't believe any of this, you cannot deny what you're looking at now and what you're listening. Come on, watch him, Bo. What? Look at the position what? of the faces. Is he saying he's going to be one of the next sculptures on that mountain? You know, is he going to be a president? I didn't even think of that. Ooh, I didn't think of that either. <laughs> right next to George Washington. Wow. Right? I didn't think of that either. So, That's cool. But here's here's a before we even get it. There's one more. Um, so with that said, how do you explain this? I couldn't believe this one. Who is he referring to? When in this video, it looks like he's done. He knows his time is done. Um, yeah, play it. Play, play the Isaac. Play this. Listen to what he says. Look at He's being Junior. very sincere. Junior. Gonna change the world. Junior's going to change the world. He's Junior. very, very in touch with the light. He's in touch with the light, Junior. It's going to be great. And it's a shame it's that gonna I'm going to miss it. It's a shame that I'm going to miss it because I was so stupid. Now, so Isaac Cappy, right after that, he's done. It's a shame I'm going to miss it. Junior is in tune with the light. He's going to change the world. He's, he's going to change the world. Who is he referring to? Who's Junior? You can't deny what you just watched and heard. Right. And right after that, he jumped. Now, supposedly, just a theory, conspiracy, allegedly. He, in another video, Isaac put out. I, 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 I don't want to say the name. 
But he says, so a huge name. So, and you look up Epstein's list. Yeah. Look up Epstein's list, whether you want to believe it or not, or it's fake or whatever. He says, so and so called me. And he said he wants to make a deal with Q. Yeah. No one knows what Q is. He says, so and so called me. He said, this, this is, basically oh, this is a great one. The summary of everything. Make it. Can you a read this? Screen. Yeah. Can um, you read, can you read that Chimbo? I will read it. It says how to make the swamp believe they killed you. There were many silent patriots serving as security around the assassinated president's son all through his life. Absolutely true. Some watched from far How off. How can it not be? Right. These patriots were also in every level of government and military, quietly observing slash waiting. The day came when his security found a thin strip of putty wrapped around the fuselage of his airplane. It was C-4 with an altitude trigger. As the plane goes up to altitude X, the trigger is armed. When the plane drops back down to land, the explosives set off at X altitude. The back of the plane would be blown off, forcing the plane to dive, giving no electronic record of what happened and the appearance of pilot error. The swamp would then use Coast Guard, Navy, mainstream media, uh, etc., to complete the quote accident. But the swamp had to wait until JFK decided to fly. He had time to plan. The plane took off on July 16th, 1999. It was still rigged to explode, but a remote trigger was replaced with the altitude trigger. A Navy pilot flew JFK Jr.'s plane armed with a parachute and a tape recorder. Playing the voice of JFK Jr., he radioed the tower at Martha's Vineyard to land. After jumping from the plane, he hits the remote Boom, plane goes down. Patriots in the military, quote, recover the bodies. Navy divers had eight hours of video recording the rescue. The tapes are still missing. Um, on the side here, it says no proof of the bodies recovered. Navy divers were relocated after the search. The cremated remains at a funeral held on a Navy ship. Only 17 people attended the service. One of the big 17 Q. Right. Right. Uh, and yeah, but, but just that, 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 you know, he was one of the, probably the, he was, what is, they called him the, the, you know, the, uh, uh, most attractive man on earth or something time magazine he was the probably the most popular human being on the planet at the time without a doubt all right and 17 people at his funeral and his his body is cremated <laughs> right i think we leave it as this yeah and this is a bunker uh, that I hope you enjoyed, whether you whether you look into these theories or not look into the theories. But I will say this. I'm going to put myself out there. If one day it is revealed he is alive, dude, I, I will drop to my knees and start sobbing. And I'll also giggle at the same time going, <laughs> how did you not know? But for now, it's just one of those, hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah. Mm. Because if you look at the world going on, I still am a conspiracy theory that we are in the middle of a psychological visual war. And you and the ones that are not awake have to see what's happening to show you what they were going to do and what they're capable of doing to not only to our country, but all of humanity right. in order for you to wake up 
and wake up quick. Um, and we'll see as time goes on. In the meantime, hey, man, Jimbo, thanks for joining me. This was so Got much it. fun. It was fun. JFK yeah. Jr. Oh, my God. It was a great time. All right. Jimbo, well, happy good. Thanksgiving. Take thanks. care, brother. You too. You too. And you too, Mike. Happy Thanksgiving. All you right. too, man. Thank you. All right. Um, I'll just say this. No matter who you believe is going to save us, whoever, trust your creator. Keep your eyes on the creator. Be very careful of all the um, false idols. And they're, 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 I do believe that we're in such a beautiful, special time. It looks horrifying. But at the same time, the more dark you see, the more it pushes you to the light. And yeah, you're going to see a bunch of bananas getting caught in the whirlwind. That's what, that's what, that, that's what unfortunately, um, the casualty, I call, we call them the casualties of war, the casualties of psychological war, the ones that still believe everything they read in the paper, the ones that still believe um, everything on the news has some facts to it. And that's okay. But for the, for the many that understand how deep and wide this is becoming, keep your eye on that light, find your spirit, understand your soul, unplug the world, take a walk into nature, stop, stop social media for a while. Is, um, we were not born here to do all this. We were not born to be running around and be a CEO and all this jazz and you know, watch the watch a sports player get paid fifty million dollars because they're they, they can handle a ball. It's all part of the Roman Empire that never left. It's all part of entertainment to keep you all excited and drinking beer and dumb you down and numb you. And every sitcom that's come out in the last twenty years has dumbed a man and made him stupid. And that's that's all part of the psychological war of them destroying a family unit and God unit. I've lived in entertainment for my whole life. And I've learned this. Doesn't matter if you're going to make $100 million today. It doesn't matter if you're going to get to meet your greatest idol in the world. It doesn't matter if you're selling out the biggest arenas in the world. If your spirit and your soul is not connected to your creator to keep you focused and keep you grounded. You're going to find yourself spinning in terrible directions. So for all of you suffering and all of you out there that have, have gone through some tough hardships, I, I hope, I hope your healing comes quicker. I hope, uh, your your healing comes sooner than later. Um, but we are all deeply connected, man. And I hope you discover that. And the only way you discover that is by realizing who the demons are. And they're on your television. They're on your screens. They're everywhere. And the more, always remember, the more they try to push them out there, that's when they're trying to distract you. Have a good life. Take care of someone today. Make them laugh. Take care of yourself today so you can take care of others. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. Mikey, have a good one, brother. We'll you see you, man. you Happy soon. Happy Thanksgiving. California. You as well. See you in Cali later. Yes, sir. Thanks for yeah. checking out the Bruniverse. And we'll see you next week on the Bruniverse. Bye. If you'd like to check out this episode, Uncut and Uncensored, head on over to my Patreon page at jimbrewer.com slash Patreon. This is Jim Brewer, and I got my own Patreon page, and hopefully you'll check it out. Live comedy concert streamed once a month. Early access to the Bruniverse podcast every single week, and have bonus footage and bonus segments. I promise you I'm not going to let you down. Go check out my official Jim Brewer Patreon page, and I'll see you there.